It's good to be with you once again. This is the period of music, song, and story we call The Living Word. And the Salvation Army Band welcomes you with a special arrangement of an old and familiar hymn. sweet the name of Jesus sounds in a believer's ear. I'm sure you recognize the melody. In fact, you were probably humming right along. The next number, perhaps, is not so well known, but it carries the same deep inspiration. The trio sings, There is beauty in the name of Jesus. Let me tell you about Phil and the hitchhiker. Phil is a friend of mine. He travels a lot on the road, and on one of his recent trips, he stopped to pick up a hitchhiker. Once inside the car, Phil could see that his passenger was quite young, but there was a certain sullen toughness about him that made Phil wonder 
if he'd been altogether wise taking the younger man aboard. So anyway, Phil, telling the story, says that he tried to draw the youth into friendly conversation. However, the young hitchhiker simply hunched up in his windbreaker, stared out the window and responded with muttered monosyllables. Okay, my young friend, said Phil to himself, if you want to play the Marlon Brando bit, go right ahead. And then more to ease the tension than anything else, Phil started whistling softly to himself. He admits that he didn't even realize what he was whistling, but suddenly, still staring out of the window, the young hitchhiker picked up the tune. And to Phil's mild amazement, he quietly sang, O oh God, our help in ages past, right through to the end. Then he turned to Phil with a little lopsided grin. A surprise, huh, he said. And you know something? That's the only hymn I know all the words for. The only hymn I understand. The only one. Learned it when I was a kid, he said. I never forgot it. He shook his head as he prepared to leave the car. Funny how some things stick with you right along. He climbed out of the car, gave Phil a little wave, and strode off kicking through the dust. Well, as you know, I rather think old Isaac Watts would have been very pleased with that little story, because when the man known as the father of English hymnody wrote, Oh God, Our Help, some 250 years ago, he intended it to be a hymn that would be understood, a hymn that would stick in the minds of all types of people. In the year 1714, England had reached a point of crisis. Queen Anne was dying and would leave no heir to the throne. Half of the Queen's ministers had elected their own man to bear the crown, while the other half were plotting to enthrone a monarch of their own choice. Armies were massed in both camps, and civil war threatened. There was great danger that the religious liberties for which Isaac Watt had fought could be trampled underfoot. So-called free thinkers might once again be called upon to face death at the point of the sword or at the stake. In this hour of peril, Isaac Watt sat down in the quiet of his room, and wrote this glorious hymn. The following day, he presented it to his London congregation. It was a stirring declaration of supreme faith in a just and all-powerful God. But unlike so many hymns of the day, it employed words and phrases of beautiful simplicity. It was a hymn that had just as much meaning for the tinker in the streets as for the gentleman of high estate. It is interesting to note that of 132 words contained in the hymn, 106 are words of one syllable. As one eminent hymnologist puts it, if Ernest Hemingway had ever chosen to compose a hymn, this is the sort of hymn he might have written, not one wasted or useless word. During a more recent and even greater time of peril, namely World War II, Isaac Watts' clarion call once more rang loud and clear. In Great Britain, O oh God, Our Help in Ages Past, became almost a national hymn. Among the American forces overseas, so I'm told, the hymn was often tied in with the 23rd Psalm and the Lord's Prayer to form a simple yet complete service of dedication. Sufficient is thine arm alone, and our defense is sure. But O oh God, Our Help is much more than a hymn of appeal in the face of dire emergencies. As one noted hymn historian points out, it's a hymn for every day, a natural antidote for all our petty fears and problems. Medical doctors go to great lengths to advise us that we are worrying too much. They tell us that by far the greater proportion of our bodily ills and diseases are caused by nagging fears and niggling worries, but significantly they don't tell us how to get rid of these fears and worries. He went on to state that faith such as is expressed in Isaac Watts' grand hymn was the only answer. For me, I have to agree with him. Without faith, we are nothing. Or as Addison once wrote, that person who has firm trust in the supreme being is powerful in his power, is wise by his wisdom, is happy by his happiness. With that thought in mind, let me sing the hymn for you. Oh, 
Thy saints have dwelt secure. Sufficient is thine arm alone, and our defense is sure. Faith has always been a touchy word for a lot of people, especially the kind of people who won't believe in anything unless they can see it, touch it, prove it. But the very essence of spiritual faith is that it can't be proved. If it could be proved, pinned down, microscoped, analyzed, then it would cease to be faith. This is not to say that it's easy to have faith in God and his purpose. It isn't easy. In the Gospel according to St. Mark, we read of the man who brought his young son to Jesus. The boy was a victim of a strange and terrifying ailment, and the man was doubtful that Christ could cure him. In mild rebuke, Jesus said, Everything is possible to one who has faith. I have faith, replied the man. Help me where my faith falls short. Now there's a vast difference between this honest, even uncomprehending reach for faith and a stubborn refusal to believe. That kind of unrelenting doubt paralyzes. It depletes our inner resources, takes the heart out of us. Faith, on the other hand, vitalizes. It generates energy, stimulates, gives heart to go forward. This is something you can prove in your own experience. There is no misfortune, no tragedy, no burden of sorrow or sickness so great, but what faith can conquer. Faith, that is, in God and his love for us. We are not alone. We are never alone. We are more than conquerors through him who gave his life that we might live. This is the victory that overcomes the world, our faith. And now let us pray. O oh God, our Father, help us to know that thou art ever with us each and every day. And so strengthen our faith in thine abiding presence through Jesus, thy Son and our Savior. Amen. Join us again, won't you, when we will seek to learn more of the living word and of him who is, in very truth, the living word. bestseller. This free Bible correspondence course is yours just for the asking. Simply send a letter or postcard to The Living Word, care of this station. Do it today. Do it now.